all right we are at the aws console let's start everything from the scratch for uh, glue etl we'll navigate to s3 why we are navigating to s3 because in order to start the etl process we need one kind of source so as to try and uh, show the etl process let's click on create bucket we'll uh, create bucket let's give it a different name a random name let's go down create bucket yep now it got created uh, let's now open this i have some sample files on my computer sample data uh, what does uh, these sample data contain let me open this excel maybe so this sample data contains uh, uh, some basic information so we'll upload this uh, dummy uh, values there uh, so as to um, uh, carry out the uh, etl show the etl process so let's uh, close this let's upload this file into s3 now we are on our bucket let's upload and browse the file from our local computer so we are at the local computer let's upload this our uh, sample data file let's uh, click on upload all right so we got our uh, source file uh, up and ready csv let's duplicate uh, this tab and uh, now navigate uh, to aws uh, glue I type glue here let's click glue so in glue uh, we have uh, two types of uh, process uh, uh, we'll show first the visual etl so visual etl is nothing but kind of uh, graphs what's uh, called in uh, etl like ab initio or metallion uh, those kind of etl stuff if you are familiar uh, especially about so let's uh, navigate to uh, visual etl first we'll click on visual etl so in visual etl we as you can see the source so since uh, we have already a file in s3 so we can mention it as a source there is a ton of parameter like um, we can mention source as redshift or uh, something dynamo db uh, mongodb those kind of stuff uh, but for the simplicity uh, we'll use um, um, s3 uh, we need to specify our uh, s3 let's click on browse let's click on cloud guru amit let's click on sample data choose so let's choose it so our format is uh, csv so let's um, choose csv there are a couple of other formats as well which we are currently not interested uh, so we will uh, select a csv so, so now let's uh, try some uh, like uh, show some etl operation or data quality check so uh, one thing i want to show there are many functionalities i'll uh, show you some of the important ones uh, maybe evaluate data quality so uh, data quality uh, we know in uh, data engineering is very helpful especially uh, say uh, we need to check whether uh, uh, the data is complete or not here if you look on the uh, right hand corner here we have um, sample uh, ready made templates to check uh, we can uh, let's say let's uh, this is a column count uh, if the column is greater than 10 then only our um, uh, uh, result will pass let's say you already know a sample file which is coming onto your uh, computer or uh, on your project which has 12 uh, columns or 11 columns so you can give set this as 10 so that it passes so now uh, let's uh, click on enter there are uh, many checks uh, here if you look uh, as per your requirement so i'll uh, select one of them row count is one of the famous uh, ones uh, let's say you don't want the blank file so a row count will be definitely greater than one right uh, let's say a source team uh, has sent you a blank file so how will you determine so by giving it as greater than one that's how we determine whether the file is blank or not if you run this etl job uh, after saving run then it will show it so uh, so let's now uh, remove it by rem uh, we can delete uh, here it, it will get deleted so let's uh, put some interesting uh, thing like uh, there are several uh, change, uh, etl operations like we can change the schema we can uh, drop anything uh, those kind of thing uh, drop fields add fields so let's uh, put this at the top if we put it simply goes up there and then we need to select one target 
uh, where our uh, target will be like data will be loaded we can generally in etl we load uh, in redshift for data warehouse process but for the simplicity we'll uh, load the data back to s3 uh, like we can select any source so also you note like our source file is in csv we can implement conversion like we can convert it into json format um, even later like uh, as per our uh, requirement uh, project requirement so we'll uh, uh, later check out some uh, you know, try out some quiz related to it as well just remember we can uh, convert the uh, exchange uh, like uh, the extension of the files using um, glue as well we can convert the type of uh, record or uh, you know, file par key is one of the popular columnar format used in uh, like redshift for faster um, uh, querying and all you can uh, try out par key for uh, loading the file in athena or redshift it will query fast so i personally tried tried it uh, tried it out and uh, uh, that's how it uh, works for a target location you can see uh, it's showing one exclamation mark generally uh, the green tick means everything is fine exclamation means something is wrong so we are getting exclamation mark because we have not specified the target location let's uh, browse let's go to our bucket okay let's uh, select the target as same generally we create another folder or different uh, bucket uh, but for the simplicity uh let's um, see it's green tech now so our um, uh, for this demo we have just made it simple like our basically our source and target are in the same location but uh, yeah then again we can uh, drop or remove any any kind of fields as per our uh, requirement so i hope uh, you found this tutorial helpful uh, if you need to, um, we are not running it because it'll, it will uh, cost uh, very much and under job details there are uh, some parameters which we need to uh, we can configure i'll uh, explain you the parameters uh, so here is the glue version we can even mention the uh, language so worker type is nothing but it is uh, used kind of parallel processing and all so for g1 x is sufficient but uh, if you want to do parallel processing we can increase it to something like g2 x or something so here we have number of workers the uh, if your uh, job has many uh, as uh, many kind of uh, rows or a large number of rows you can uh, tweak this out uh, save this and uh, click on uh, uh, run so our uh, job will basically run all right let's look at this equation we'll first look at option a option a says utilize s3 select for data querying so using s3 select is good for filtering data in s3 but it may not be suitable solution for querying and analyzing large amounts of data as required by the question therefore incorrect choice let's move to option b b says use amazon redshift spectrum for data querying so amazon redshift spectrum can be used to query complex data and uh, large files stored in s3 but it is more expensive as compared to athena therefore we'll uh, reject this on the basis of cost country uh, constraints as required by the question let's move to option c c says employ aws glue data catalog and amazon athena for data querying this looks good create an s3 life cycle policy to transition data older than one year to s3 glacier deep archive so this uh, looks good we'll keep this because it satisfies all the requirement for querying complex uh, queries as well by athena and also saving cost by using a life cycle policy and moving to uh, s3 um, glacier deep archive which will save cost which are data not accessed we have a requirement here and uh, let's now move to option d d says um, uh, using of s3 intelligent tiering so we know that s3 intelligent tiering is used when we are not sure about the access pattern of the data but as per the question if we look we already know the access pattern and uh, there's a uh, requirement a strict requirement that the data older than one year is not accessed so we are confirmed about the access pattern of the data so d is out we'll lock option c as the correct answer let's bring it to the snow we have an interesting question let's uh, try to understand the question first 
we need to mask the pan data then apply some transformation like uh, removing certain fields and finally converted uh, the record into json format so this is a clear hint that we need to use an extract transform load tool or service to achieve this requirement so let's now dive into the options one by one so option e says trigger an aws lambda i'm not reading out the entire uh, option but if you uh, read the entire option you'll find there are finally three lambdas here one here one here and there is another trigger final lambda so there are three lambdas since option a uses multiple lambda invocation which could be inefficient and costly also it doesn't specify how the pan data will be uh, masked uh, which is what is also uh, required by the equation if you look uh, therefore option a is out let's move to option b b says uh, set up an aws fargate so though fargate can handle the workload but it is no way an etl service secondly there is no mention in this option uh, once again uh, like uh, how the masking will be done which is uh, required by the question c says uh, set up an aws glue so this uh, looks good because aws uh, glue is an etl service which can handle the transformation requirements uh, like removing certain fields and uh, masking and output uh, the data in json format glue also allows for easy expansion to handle additional feeds in future this uh, looks good we'll lock this as the correct answer all righty let's look at this uh, question this is some what related to big data so let's uh, first look at option name he says keep the data in amazon s3 this looks good and use amazon redshift spectrum to query the data although redshift spectrum can query data directly from s3 it is more expensive uh, as compared to athena because it requires an active amazon redshift cluster let's eliminate this we'll look at option b now b says keep the data in amazon s3 and use the aws glue data catalog and amazon athena to query the data so amazon s3 is cost effective storage service we know and amazon athena allows us to query data directly from s3 we only pay for queries which we run moreover aws glue catalog is used to store metadata and makes it available for us uh, to use in uh, data discovery and queries so this can be the potential answer let's park this we'll move to option uh, c c says keep the data in emr file system and use presto in amazon emr to query the data so running persistent uh, emr cluster is more expensive than using athena uh, which we have got in option b since option um, b is uh, better than option c so for now we can reject option c let's move to option d this is keep the data in amazon redshift and use amazon redshift to query the data redshift is again more expensive uh, than athena uh, when it uh, uh, comes to uh, querying and also uh, redshift uh, requires data loading uh, from s3 to uh, redshift like uh, we need to uh, load the data first from s3 so uh, which is uh, not the cost effective solution anyway so we'll uh, reject this option and we'll lock option b as the correct answer so please 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 don't go away let's meet in the next part of the series which got to be more interesting